in 4 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 9 we read the story of Hannah she was barren she had prayed no breakthrough she had fasted no breakthrough she gave an offering no breakthrough she quoted the wall no breakthrough and one day she was praying and her mouth was moving and this prophet came and said put away your bottle of whiskey you're drunk but instead of getting angry instead of exploding like you normally explode and let them know you can't talk to me like that i'd rather leave this church and go to another church who do you think you are you know god i know god you call the girl girl you call god i call god you have bible i have bible i will go to another church down the road hannah did not say that hannah said my lord i am not drunk i i am just pouring out my heart to god i need flesh upon this bone not knowing that the last word in the mouth of the prophet was reserved for her and she said he said to her may the lord grant your petition and barrenness of many years that has brought shame disappeared if you want to get breakthrough when you go out in the world you have your degree you are so educated your masters your first degree when you get to a place of work for you to be promoted there you will have to come down and receive some insult nice insult <laughs> hello are you hearing me i am preparing you for your future after living here you know we get to call sometimes and the judges will just insult us and say oh they oh, keep quiet me ah, they lay pastor author solicitor lawyer father husband musician television something that <laughs> the judges with all the position i don't think 1000 people knows them in the world i'm known by millions but they will say keep quiet you know what i will say yes sir because his reign over me is just for 30 minutes and i will be out and i'll become a king again when you are under authority subject yourself to rulership for you to become a king Hannah, the yoke of barrenness was destroyed in her life just like that because she received insult from the prophet. Some of you, your lecturers, will insult you here. Listen to this. You have a date sensitive problem in, the U in Ukraine. Why? After 30 years, he will no longer be on top of you. Get used to obtaining insults. You will succeed. Amen. Let me call another witness. In Mark chapter 7, we saw the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Rose of Charon, Lily of the Valley, Black Morning Star, insulting somebody. The one who was and who is and who is to come. Hey? Look at your neighbor and say, You are a dog. Now, now, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Look at your neighbor and say, you are a dog. Now, 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 now. You thought this pastor is just being rude. But Jesus was ruder. If there's any word like that <laughs> read let us look at it mark chapter 7 from verse 24 i want us to study 
He says, from there, he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered the house and wanted no one to know it. But he could not be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. And she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth. And she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first. For it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Imagine. And she answered and said to him, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumb. Then Jesus said to her, for this say, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. He took me and called a dog for the demons to go. You know, I said you should call your neighbor a dog. You found it as an absurd, absurd word. But Jesus said it. The reason why we are gathered to here today is because of him. He called someone a dog. That woman was too focused on having flesh on her bone. She can't be bothered about the insult. She was too focused on getting married. She can't be focused. She can't be worried about the insult. Too focused to complete her degree without failing. Not worried about the insult. Too focused on receiving the precious Holy Spirit and becoming really born again. She cannot be bothered by the insult by the ushers at the gate. Jesus called her. He talked. Imagine your daughter sick, and then someone look at her, someone that is supposed to be born again, son of God, savior, redeemer, king of king, lord of law, rose of Sharon, alpha and omega, who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for the law with him was with him. I got there and said, you are a dog. <laughs> you know, when I read that place, when I read that one, and the one I will be telling you next, I became, I'm from Ondo town. Ondo town, Ondo people are naturally crazy. <laughs> Any Ondo person here? Yes, sir. We are, we are mad. <laughs> listen, listen. Oh, hold on. Ondo people, they don't go to Habalis. They don't have time. It's a waste of time. You mess up, they sort you out there and then. And they will tell you, they will tell you now to frustrate any other move from you. They will say, well, you may go to your harbor list. I must not have headache. I must not have accident. If anything happens to me, it's you. Will you proceed? No. Oh, no, people. We don't have time to get class. We will sort you out there and then. Now, think of an Ondo man, mad Ondo man, Mad on the man, a mad on the man who now becomes a lawyer. You remember Ganifa Waimi? He's from my town, on the town. We drank the same water. On the man that becomes a lawyer is super dog raised to power seven. <laughs> so by our nature and my training, uh, I should be coming. When I'm coming, you will open the door for me. You will put me in five star, and at the airport I will have an entourage. But when Jesus entered, undoneness disappeared. <laughs> Law gave room to grace. I became humble. The things that used to be important to me no longer matter. I started learning how to absorb insults. 